hey everyone, I've had a requested game, so I hope we do it justice. And this game is between Alexander Alakine against Emmanuel Lasker, played in New York in 1924. Alakine is white and Lasker is black. And Alakine starts off with the move 1d4, Lasker plays d5, and c4 is played by white and now e6 from black. So we're getting to a queen's gambit declined once knight f3 is played, knight to f6, and knight c3 from white. Black continue with knight bd7, and white decides to exchange on d5 with c takes d5, and black recaptures with their pawn as well. White now played bishop to f4, and I believe this move is rarely seen nowadays. I think white usually plays bishop to g5. And I think it's because black can now start attacking this bishop with moves like knight to h5, as you'll see in the game. Black continued with c6, Alakine played e3, and Lasker played knight to h5. So that's a very annoying move for white to deal with. It hits the bishop on f4 and threatens to double the pawns on the f-file. Now bishop g5 is a move you can typically play in these type of positions, hitting the queen. And black should continue with bishop to e7, and I think after captures, captures, and bishop to e2 from white, this position is relatively equal, and in fact, maybe black's wasted a tempo by playing knight to h5. The knight should retreat back to f6. After queen c2, both sides can castle, and it's a very equal game. In the game, though, Alakine continued with some hyper-development. Instead, he played bishop to d3, developing his bishop, and this allows now black to take the bishop on f4, and e takes f4 is played. So white has doubled the pawns and maybe significantly weakened the d4 pawn. But they've got a really fast development. White's going to castle quite quickly. And they're also threatening to put a knight on e5 with these two nice central pawns on d4 and f4. But I like Lasker's play. So he played bishop to d6, threatening the pawn on f4. So this forces white to now defend with g3. And this weakens their position somewhat. Another thing to note is that Black's now has the two bishops, which could be very significant. This bishop on c8 could become very powerful now that Black's played g3. It can hop into places like g4 and h3. But in this position, Black castled and White castled. And Lasker played a very logical move, just played rook to e8. But this move has a lot of flexibility to it. It now allows Black to play knight to f8. And in the game, Lasker's plan was actually to play f6, bishop to e6, bishop to f7, and bishop to h5. So this rook e8 moves allows black to continue with this plan. Queen c2 was played by Alakine, so he's not just sitting back, he's attacking. He attacks this h7 pawn. And what's impressed me actually with black's play here is quite resilient, and he doesn't succumb to playing a pawn move here. He could easily play h6 or g6 to avoid this bishop takes h7 idea, but he knows this would probably weaken his position somewhat, but he just gets on with his plan. He just played knight to f8, and again the plan is simple, bishop to e6, f7, bishop to f7, and bishop h5. And also this knight f8 nicely defends this h7 pawn. White played knight to d1, rerouting this knight maybe to e3, and getting some sort of attack. Maybe he wants to jump into f5 as well. It would be a very nice square for this knight. Now there's nothing wrong with Lasker's next move. He gets on with his plan. He played the move f6. However, I think that was a much stronger move where black can win material. And it's quite a nice array of moves. So black could play bishop g4, attacking the knight on f3. Once it moves to e5, which is the sensible move, hitting the bishop on g4. But black can actually play bishop h3, attacking the rook. The rook's forced to move to e1, and now black should continue with queen to b6, hitting this pawn on d4. And there's no real way for white to defend this d4 pawn. And maybe this is the problem in white's position. Once this pawn moves on e off e3, it's going to be very hard to defend this d4 pawn. So for instance, if queen c3 here, black can play bishop b4, and they're going to win the exchange. So we can't do that. So after queen b6, Knight to f3 is also another option to defend the d4 pawn, but then black can play rook takes e1. After the knight recaptures, then black can play queen takes d4 and win the pawn. So what is white to do in this situation? Well, knight to e3 is given as the best move, but black does win the pawn, queen takes d4. White's best move here is to play bishop to f5, 
and after captures, the knight recaptures and black plays queen c5, white can play queen to b3. So white does have some slight counterplay, but black can play bishop takes e5. After f takes e5, queen b6. So white is a pawn down here, and to be honest, it's going to be very hard for white to win this back. So maybe black should have gone in for this variation. So bishop g4, again, would have been a, a very nice move for black to play. But Lasker played sensibly. He played the move f6, getting on with his own plan. White played knight to e3. And by no means has white played any bad moves in this game so far. These have all been quite solid moves. Bishop to e6 from Lasker. White played knight to h4. And black now sets up a battery. Lasker played bishop c7. I think his idea here is to play queen to d6, and at some point he could actually play g5 maybe to undermine this f4 pawn. But the point is that Lasker is just going to point his pieces right at white's king. But again, Alakine doesn't sit back. He played the move b4, so he wants to play b5 and start undermining this c6 pawn. Black played bishop to b6, so Lasker's noticed the weakness again on d4, so he hits it with the bishop. Now here white could have been quite sneaky, they could have played the move rook fd1. And this is because if bishop takes d4, white can play bishop takes h7. After knight takes, white can play rook takes d4. After knight to f8, both sides are pretty much equal. And white's got rid of his weak pawn on d4. So I think white would have probably wanted to do this. But after bishop to b6, Alakine decided to play knight to f3 defending the pawn d4 with the knight. And again, Lasker gets on with their own plan, bishop to f7, threatening to play bishop to h5, and hit this knight on f3, which is defending this d4 pawn. So the house of cards falls down if black can try and get this move in. Perhaps white can defend with h3 here, play, preparing move g4. Black doesn't have to play bishop h5 straight away. They could play queen d7, and if king g2 to defend the h3 pawn, now play bishop to h5. White can continue with, let's say, b5. And after bishop takes, king takes, bishop takes d4. White can capture on c6 and black recaptures. And white plays rook ac1. And these are all stockfish moves. Uh, and black should continue with takes. After takes, queen takes h3. Queen takes c6. Queen h5 and king g2. Believe it or not, after the smoke's cleared... Black is only ever so slightly better in this position. So white is by no means lost here. And I actually think they've got quite an active queen. So maybe after bishop f7, white could have played h3. But Alakine isn't a defensive player. And he continues his own attack. And I think he, this was a mistake. I think he should acknowledge that actually Lasker has a good attack here. And he just needs to defend. But Alakine anyway played the move b5. And I think this is the move that maybe loses white any positional advantage because now Lasker just hits white bam bishop h5 hitting this knight on f3 which is defending this important d4 pawn maybe Alakine thought he was defending with the move g4 but actually this is again a positional weakness for white Lasker calmly drops their bishop back to f7 and now black realizes that he can now attack on this diagonal so after white plays b takes c6, again Lasker plays a very nice tactical move. He didn't take it straight away, just plays the calm move rook c8, pinning this pawn on c6. Alakai moves their queen off this c file, and black calmly recaptures on c6, and awaits white's next move. So in the game, Alakai now played the move f5, and... I believe this move just weakens the black squares even more. This diagonal looks very tempting. And Lasker isn't one to miss this type of positional advantage. The next move he played was queen to d6. Preparing move bishop to c7 where he's just going to battery against this h2 pawn. Again the only defender for white's position really is this knight on f3. So if black can target this knight, white's king defense should collapse. Alakheim played knight to g2. Maybe try and reinforce this knight on f3. But black plays now bishop to c7 and sets up his mate on h2. Alakine played rook f e1. And Lasker just gets on with their own attack, h5 now. 
threatening to play h takes g4. Maybe white should play g5 in this position, but I think black's position is just too powerful because black can take on g5. Knight e5 is an option for white. Black can continue with knight to d7 though. And f to f4, g takes f4. White just has enough maybe with knight takes f7. After king takes f7, white can try this variation. But again, I still think black has a major advantage in this position. In actual fact, black is two pawns up with uh, much more active pieces. So after Lasker played h5, Alakine played the move h3. And instead of taking on g4, Lasker played the move knight to h7. So getting another piece into the attack, preparing knight g5 and hits white's last defender, this knight on f3. White takes on e8, the rook recaptures, and white played rook to e1. Now here black has to be a bit careful. This is because if black just takes the rook on e1, let's say rook takes e1, this actually loses their whole advantage. White can recapture with the knight on g2. And if black continues their attack with knight g5, white can take this knight. They can try queen h2 check, king f1, f takes g5. But white now has some counterplay. They can play queen b7, hitting the pawn on c6 and the bishop on c7. Again, black can continue queen takes h3 and after king e2, bishop to d6, queen takes c6 and bishop to f8. The smoke's cleared a bit and we'll see who's come out on top. Well, actually, both sides have very equal material. And in this position, white should play knight to f3. And after queen takes g4, king e3, white does have a very solid position. They're a pawn down and black's got his past h pawn. But it's going to be very hard to queen this. For instance, if h4, white can play knight to e5. And start hitting the queen and this bishop. And also hit this pawn at the same time. So black's position isn't easy to convert by no means. Judging by that variation we just witnessed, it makes no sense for black to go in for rook takes e1. Even if white played other lines and black played other moves, there's just no reason to risk the position they're in because white's just clearly losing this game. So for this reason, Lasker played a very nice move. Just played rook to b8, so hits the queen on b2, and white will be forced to move the queen, so black doesn't lose the tempo playing this move. Alakine played queen to c1, and black gets on with the plan knight to g5. If knight takes g5 in this position, black can continue with queen h2. After king f1, black should calmly play f takes g5. And this is because black threatens to play queen h1 check and win the knight on g2. After knight to e3, black can play queen takes h3 with check. After king e2, just h takes g4. Threatening, let's say, queen f3. If rook g1, black can continue bishop to f4. And white's pieces are very much tied down. And white can't even take this pawn on c6 because moves like rook b2 are on the cards. So black has a very comfortable position. After knight g5 from Lasker then, in the game, Alakine played knight to e5. And after f takes e5 from Lasker, Alakine played queen takes g5. Perhaps after knight to e5, a better move would just simply play knight takes h3. And if king h2, black can play knight takes f2, threatening the bishop on d3 and the pawn on g4. And the knight on e5 is still under attack from this pawn. So knight takes h3 was probably a better move, but anyway, after f takes, queen takes g5, Lasker has played the move e4, hitting the bishop on d3 and preparing queen h2 check. And to be honest, white is totally busted in this position. Alakine tried some tricks, he played the move f6, threatening to play queen takes g7, but Lasker has the move g6, and there's no way to mate the black king. Queen h6 here doesn't work due to queen takes f6. So in the game, white played f4, stopping queen takes h2. And again, Lasker played a very wise move. It'd be very tempting to try and take this bishop here. But actually, white gains some counterplay here. And black still has to be careful because white could play g takes h5. And there are some chances with, let's say, h takes g6. So I don't think black really wants to do this. So instead... After the move f4 from white, black took on g4 with the pawn, 
And now they are threatening to play e takes d3 because there's no more g takes h5 ideas. Alakine retreated their bishop back, bishop to e2, and Lasker continued g takes h3, hitting the knight on g2. He tried long, one last trick though, bishop h5, threatening to play bishop takes g6. But Lasker countered this, rook to b2, hitting the knight on g2. Knight h4 is played, and queen takes f4. White's captured on f4, and the bishop recaptured. And here, actually, Alakine resigned the game. This is because the bishop on h5 is still attacked, and also now black's threatening to play moves like h2. For instance, if uh, white takes this pawn, let's say, h2 can be played with check after king h1. Black can play bishop to g3. And frankly, this is just a comfortable one end game for black. Where they're attacking two pieces at once. So I think you'll all agree, Lasker played a brilliant attacking game there. And I think Alakine lost, maybe due to overextending on the queen side and playing this b5 move. I don't think that was the wisest choice because now black just gains the advantage with bishop to h5. And hits this knight on f3. And this is really what caused white to lose the game. The weakness of the white squares around the white king. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my analysis of this game. If you did, please drop me a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.